Following the ridiculous Whiskey vs Fela comparison that erupted on social media last weekend, I conducted a poll on Twitter asking people to share their thoughts on whether or not they think Whiskey is overrated. 10% said Whiskey is underrated, 24% said Whiskey is overrated, and I suspected the largest percentage insisted that Whiskey is well rated. Now you're probably wondering why I used the phrase as expected. Well, Whiskey that has the most active fans amongst its contemporaries, especially on social media. You can call them virtual soldiers because they are ready to stand by the star boy all day, anytime. So it is quite impossible to ascertain an accurate judgment based on the Twitter votes that are probably influenced by its fancy and favoritism. With that being said, is it safe to say Whiskey is overrated? You can say hell no, but I say fucking right. You want to know why? Then stick around. First things first, what does it mean to be overrated? According to Urban Dictionary, overrated is a term used to describe something that gets more hype and credit than it is actually worth. So how much credit and hype is Whiskey getting and how much does Whiskey's music actually worth? Some few months ago, Nigerian rapper M.I. sent out a tweet saying Nigerians do not deserve Whiskey. Damn, that's a lot of hype. Now, how is it possible that Nigerians who have always stood by Whiskey no longer deserve Whiskey? What exactly does Whiskey do that has made him too much for Nigerians to deserve? Are his songs that good? A while ago, Whiskey reportedly fell sick and in that moment he sent out a tweet saying, If I die today, I die a legend. Wait a minute, what does it really mean to be a legend? I know someone might say he has an international project, he's got several global collaborations, he's gotten a Guinness World Record recognition and he recently sold at the prestigious Royal Halbert Hall. Very impressive! But is the international album a classic album? How many songs on the album are you currently listening to? How many songs on the album will you be listening to in the near future? And how are sounds from the other side influenced the music and changed the way we make music? I know someone might remind me that sounds from the other side landed on the coveted Billboard 200 chart. But trust me, getting on the Billboard chart is not as difficult as you think it is. You don't need to have a great album to get on the chart. All you need is a few hot singles. For example, Come Closer which features Drake is a very popular song. And by digital standard, 1,500 streams or 10 track download is equivalent to one album purchase. So if only Come Closer is streamed often enough, the album will definitely get on the billboard chart so getting on these charts isn't a proof that an album is a classic sounds from the other side is a good album as good as every other average pop album out there but the international album is not a classic album still speaking on what makes a legend how many classic songs does whiskey have in his entire discography what is the lifespan of an average whiskey song do you still listen to daddy yo Whiskey doesn't have to be an activist like Fela, every true artist should possess a reasonable level of substance. If you want to talk about love, then tell a true story and paint a true image. Water down lyrics do not make legends. A lot of people might disagree, but the only classic record that Whiskey has to his belt is Oju Elegba, and that is because the song is substantial. It has a very realistic narrative. I know some people might say Whiskey's brand is not designed to inspire people or trigger social awareness. It makes music for excitement and to keep the party alive. But judging by that standard, do you think Whiskey makes the hottest party or radio hits? I know a lot of people might disagree, so I spoke to a prominent Nigerian club DJ who, for some personal reasons, decided to stay anonymous. And this is what he had to say. Whiskey has really had a successful year and he has blessed his fans with a lot of fine songs. But in recent times, Whiskey's song don't really light up the club like the other Nigerian pop song. Based on audience reaction, I usually prefer to play Whiskey's song as starters. But when the party is live, only one or two whiskey songs can keep the energy up. I usually prefer to play other hotter Nigerian pop songs like the videos. When it comes to SS and content, Whiskey's song is in no way different from every other average African pop song out there. And when it comes to hit records, Whiskey Dequality doesn't have the hottest hit record. So what is the hype really all about? Someone said Whiskey is the most internationally recognized African pop artist. Well, that is what is expected when Drake jumps on your song. Whiskey's rise to international prominence is a product of two things, the right network and the right song. Ojo Elegba is a fine song and at first listen, anyone can key in. Through his relationship with Skepta, Drake jumped on the song. So yes, Drake was the catalyst. Whiskey is getting all the global attention and collaborations, not because he makes the best music, but because he has been introduced by the hottest musician in America at the time. Whatever whiskey brings to the table is often accepted and celebrated because the African sound is truly groovy and that is all that the whites expect it to be. 
Whiskey has become the scale that the global audience uses to measure the quality of African music. And about what Whiskey is doing, do you think African music is properly represented? I'll let you decide that. Is Whiskey a good musician? Yes, he is. Does he make any special kind of magic that is even from what every other African pop artist is doing? No, he is not. Does the quality of his song match the hype around his name? No, they don't. Is Whiskey overrated? Yes, he is.